Welcome back. We're back at it. You can see that I've spread more mud on the, on the truck, the truck car, whatever you want to call it, COD, cab over distributor, COE, whatever. Uh, what we have is we got it mudded out all the way from the, from the headlight to the taillight. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because I know in my own brain that it's all going to have to be covered or it should be covered to get that flood that I want it to make look nice. Uh, it's not the, tra the traditional way. And like I've said before, I'm not your traditional guy. And I like to do it this way because I can work most of the day trying to get the mud on and I'm not, I'm not wasting time going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That's what I'm trying to do. Well, let's walk, take a walk over this side for anybody that's new on this thing. On this side, you can see we have it in bare metal. It's been sandblasted and uh, sandblasted and welded continuously. Uh, Jolene finished in the door lock there, finished grinding it off, make it look nice. We can cover it with glass. I have more grinding to do down there. Yes, I do. And then I got to come over here and try to get this side covered with glass. And I'm going to do the exact same process I did on the other side. And I really would like to get a lot of it done today or tomorrow. Uh, I'm not, not wanting to sand the truck down in here. I'm not wanting to. I've had, I have engines all over the place. I have Jolene's Bugatti in there. All the tools are here just kind of make it really messy. So what we've done, we just hung up a little plastic for now. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to get some, get some mud on this thing. And I'll do a little bit of sanding for you today. But I'll get some mud on the, on the other side. Then I can get it over to my storage containers and I, can, and I can sand over there all day long and not worry about a damn thing. And that's basically what I'm trying to get to. Haven't got there that far yet. It's kind of cold out today or I could have, you know, worked on the 36 to get it out of the, 35 to get it out of the way so we can get the truck out. That's a little bit of an issue I have this moment. Can't move that because I'm only one guy. Jolene's one, one woman and uh, we're not able to move it right now. So here we are in the shop. I'm going to basically show you how I'm going to sand this bad boy down. I use a eight inch orbital. I use an eight inch orbital. I'm going to take this one off right now just because, well, maybe I'll use it for a second and then I'll take it off. Might as well see what, it, what it's, if there's any grit at all. Feels okay. Well, maybe I should start fresh. Maybe I should start fresh. I'll use it for hand paper. The way I get this off is it, I would never throw that away. It's, it, this is 40 grit. The way I usually get that off that sticks for a while is use the heat gun. We'll get this pulled off. We use that for hand paper. Just close it up and use it for hand paper. There's going to be a lot of hand work in this sort of stuff. It's pretty hard to get a tool in there to work it. You're going to have to do it by hand. Jolene asked me this morning, she said, why didn't you put body filler on this part here and that part here? And I said, well, I'd like to sand this part and get it half decent where I can get it, where it feels good. Then I'd put a piece of tape on that line and then I would fill that piece and then I would try to sand that molding without hitting the tape and then I know I'm staying away from everything. Basically trying to do uh, the corners of the truck one side at a time basically these are the pads these are the pads it says 40 on the back lower the number course of the grit did you ever watch that movie true grit Jolene John Wayne, good movie, good movie. Let's put that on there like that. So that's my 40 grit. I'm going to put, I put a little oil in this already, did I not? I'm going to put a mask on. I'm going to show you how I'm going to sand this thing. And uh, you'll see how I'll fly. I should explain it one more time. The ocean floor is the truck. The ocean floor is the truck. I cannot go, I'm not going any further than that. I'm not digging it, not banging on anymore, not doing anything. I took the wheel off and fixed the, the fender, banged that out, glassed it and redid that. So I'm, I'm at where I want to be there. But right now I've, what I've done is I've put a flood on of filler to make every spot in the truck at one point. And that's called a flood. So in other words, when I'm sanding this mud, I'm constantly going to be watching for the fiberglass because the fiberglass is thin. It's right there on the weld. Also, I'm going to be watching for metal at the whole, at the whole time. 
Um, as, I'm, as I'm doing that, I'm going to be watching the filler and seeing where it's being sanded and where it's not being sanded. Where it's being sanded means that's the highest part of the flood. I'm trying to bring the flood down to get the body fill that's not sanded without going to the ocean floor. And uh, let's go for it. Let's do a little bit. Let's check it out. Jolene looks amazing today. Her hair is getting very long and blonde. Um, yubba dubba do. All right, let's do this. Highest part of the flood, lowest part of the flood. So I got to keep continuing on here to get to that point to make the flood all the same playing field. Hitting fiberglass already, very close. Always crisscrossing all the time. I want the whole flood to feel good, right? While always holding this flat. If I start leaning this, digging that, I'm going to have a mess. Uh, what I want is a glass flood on top of this truck. Fiberglass, fiberglass means I'm getting close. I'm close. I'm just trying to go around the surrounding areas, trying to get it feel right. And let's face it, the, the nicer the metal work, the nicer the metal work, the easier it is to put on the flood, which is easier to make it look good. If your metal work is poopy and wavy and, and oil canned or whatever, if it's poopy, then you'll have a hard time getting the filler where it needs to be, basically. So if I'm able to smooth this truck off quickly, that means the metal work was done well, to me. Got the flood down to the low spot. Now I'm just continuing on, trying to keep flattening her out, take it down to the ocean floor somewhere, find it. I'm close there, believe me. That's where the fiberglass is.
glass going on there. Glass showing there. I gotta say, this is what I gotta say. I'm very happy with the flood that I put on there because I'm not at the metal yet and I've got it all to one level. I'm very happy with that. Door acting funny. Moving very quickly on this stuff, crisscrossing it trying to keep this flat so I can get a round surface with a flat surface. There's metal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move on from this area. And the reason I'm going to move on from this area, because I can sand that again at any point in time, but I want to try to do is I want to try to run that flood all the way just like this. You can see the metals peeking through right there. In all honesty, you see when you see like this is that's metal right there. When you see that metal like that, to be honest with you, that's we well, should stop because there's another grit coming after that, and the other grit that comes after that will hit the metal. So. So I'm just going to try to keep on going and keep the flood down to this. Pretty basic. High spot, low spot of the flood. We're not to the ocean floor yet, so keep cruising. metal. It does not matter, it does not, it does not matter the process in which you want to do it, but I can almost guarantee you, if you're, see, if you're looking at a show car, it's been filled from head to toe. It's, 
check it out. Find out who the best builders are in the world and see if they're putting filler on their cars from head to toe. I guarantee they are. It might not be the same process as theirs. And you'll have to figure it out for yourself who's quicker. I find it's easier to let the work speak for itself. This is the flood. Oh, sorry, sweetheart. This is what the what the water looks like right here. Looking good. Looking real good. I got a metal showing there. Metal showing there. No metal showing anywhere yet. That's fantastic. It really is because there's another grit coming. And it's flat. Metal showing. Metal over there. I like to use the filler, the body filler. It's $30 a can. $30 a can. Your, your spot putty or your glazed putty that some people do their whole car with, that's $40 a can and it's one quarter of the size. Doesn't make sense for me to buy that stuff. It seems like it's more money for less, less work. More work. A lot of people say where rat rods come from. I have my opinion where rat rods come from. My opinion is, I have an opinion, it's called a belly button. And I think that this, this process here, 
uh, was not wanted <laughs> to do, so they left it the way it was, basically. Um, it, it starts with, um, I guess I think it started with not wanting to do the, the finish work to finish it. This is my flood, and I still have a little few dips and dives in it. Right there, right there, right there. So I'm going to get them if I can. I'm close there. Get out of that. I don't want to keep playing with that for some reason. Get out of that. Still haven't got them out yet, so I have to continue on sanding that filler till I get somewhere that looks like ocean floor. I try to want to keep going like this on the round spot. If I start going like this on the round, then I'll have a, a hexagon going on, that sort of thing looking. happy with I'm happy with what's going on right now and I can tell you why I'm very happy because all the filler is at one playing field nice and flat nice and flat like I could 80 that and prime that and I have not yet hit the ocean floor so that means I can keep going I can keep going take a little more off take a little more off keep going keep but I do have the product on the car to make it that way I have the product there to make it a show car finish Leave it for the 80 grit. Even Jolene wanted to feel it. Looks good, don't it?
With that there, that there, that there, that, all the little low spots, I know that this has got to come down. Gotta manhandle it sometimes. Wrong glass. Must be where the back door went on, getting close to the glass. Holding this flat must mean that's flat. metal
That's to let me know that we're, we're there. Don't want to take any more off that. Do not want to take any more off that. But you know how thick that is if we're hitting metal there. It's so minute that... But if I didn't put the product on, I, I wouldn't be able to flatten this all out to make it look nice. All this stuff I'll do by hand after. I'll show you. But not down to where it should be. Got to take a little more off right here.
Don't be so silly, Chad. Put your knee pads on. How, much, how long are we now, baby? 41. Let's see what we can get done in an hour. Let's do it. This is hand paper. Still not done. Like it's 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 looking good. It's get, it's getting flattened out. Yes, it is, but it's still not at the point where I put primer on it. Uh, I'm a big believer of 4080, 4080 prime, and uh, that's what I will do. I'll use this for hand paper. This is where it can get quite expensive buying these these things yes it can but uh, if I keep them on the filler and not on the metal they'll last quite a while also also I just want to add sharp paper makes things straight dull paper shine or polishes things so the sharper the paper the straighter you'll get See metal. It's really thin right there, but I see metal. Really thin right there. Don't want to go much further there. Got nothing to play with. I got a low spot there that I don't have to deal with. That must be where the door comes together. Flat, 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 flat. Easy here. Once I dig it down too far, that means I'm going to have to apply more filler, and I don't want to do that if I don't have to.
metal. See, that tells, you, that tells me how thick everything else is because I know what the metal works like. Metal. That's the ocean floor, it's as far as I can go if I want to keep this flat. I can do this, I can bang it in, take more fill off, and then bang it in and take more fill off, and in the end we're going to be filling them places anyways, so it's either stop at the ocean floor or get prepared to put more filler in. that floor there. But I want it straight. I'm on fiberglass, it's thin. Metal showing there.
Fiberglass, metal, 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 metal. So I'm down and I'm holding it flat. So I'm hoping that, I'm hoping that everything is flat. As I'm sanding it by hand, that's what I'm feeling for, if it's flat or not. It feels good. Take this off with 40, and I'm going to save the rest for the 80, because I know I'm going down further to get the scratches out of it. Just playing it smart. Kicking lights, man, kicking lights. Let's just look at it for a minute. So, this is what I got. Got the quarter panel sanded off. I've got fiberglass, fiberglass, fiberglass. Fiberglass, metal, metal, low spot. Must be where the door comes together, that's what I'm thinking. Fiberglass, metal, 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 metal. So I know I'm in the, in the area of something really good. What time is it? So if your employee come to you and say they got the quarter panel sand off in 55 minutes, you tell them, get back to work. And that's basically what has to happen. Have to get back to work and keep sanding. And basically what I'll do is I'll go along the whole thing I'll put a little bit more in this before I start down there, and we'll do that. Let's give away a hat or a shirt. Thanks for watching. I know that's hard to watch, uh, me working in the noise and that sort of stuff, but thanks for watching. We appreciate it, and uh, this, is how I, this is how I make a show car finish. Try to make it all flat and smooth everywhere. I do not want no low spots in it whatsoever. I want to go down just to the metal very so it's minute thick some well most of this body filler would be as thin as primer and uh, that's the way I do it I do not use putty because it costs too much it costs too much and let's face it nobody is welding up cars and not using filler nobody don't care who it is um, if they're painting them they're not they're not doing without filler what Jolene has a question How long would that take with a block? I'm thinking that it would take twice the time. And, and yeah, twice the time. And the reason I'm saying is I got, I got onto the power tools because we must know with me working and the power tool working, we got to be faster than a board file. Also, the board, it can get quite hard on the arms after a while. And what I'm doing is I've, I've done it enough with that that I, I've become good at it. I do not lay it down, tilt it, and all that stuff. I don't know if you look at that quarter panel or not, but I could 80 grit that by hand or with a DA, and I would prime that. The only place I would not be acceptable would that be right there, and that's what'll make your car look bad, is the low spots. Let's go give away a hat or a shirt. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna try to get, we'll see what happens. There's, there's a lot of work I have to do to try to get the truck moved to get sanding in a different spot, but what I had to do is put up the plastic to keep it down to the very minimal, and uh, that's what we did. Jolene did a fantastic job on her little lock there. Both sides were welded up. That's what we did. That's what we always do. We fiberglassed it and then put filler on it. I'm very happy with the amount of filler I put on it because I've pretty well got the whole quarter panel. You can imagine, you can imagine spot putting body fill on a little bit at a time where you would be. Um, I am sanding that filler all at one hardness. It's all hard. Um, there's no, there, you know, I'm not sanding different 
sometimes when you lay body fill on, then you lay body fill on top of it, you really end up sanding two different textures, one softer, one's harder, whatever. Where that was sat all night, and uh, where that sat all night, it was one hard texture, and it sanded down nicely. There's no places where it didn't feather nice, not that I know of. And here we go. How many comments? 592 comments. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. I'm sorry if I startle you with all the, the Bondo, but that's where I am when I build cars. I know when I'm building cars and I do that, you do that much welding on them, that's what has to be done. If I had a cab corner to fix, <laughs> I would not use that much body filler. No, not at all. If I was restoring a car, no, not at all. I'd fix the places that need to be fixed and then continue on from there and, and basically use the metal that I have. But on something what I have made, where every panel has been welded, it has to come together at one point. Slap shot. I used to take a nice slap shot. Yes, I did. I'd say it's foolish not to sand the Dura glass before applying the mud. Well, slap shot, that's fine. You're, you're more than welcome to sand your fiberglass before you apply mud. But I'm, I'm going to give you this challenge. Mix some mud up, mix some, mix some fiberglass up, let it set there, put some body fill on top of it, see if you can get it apart. That'll let you know, you know. There, if you don't believe me, prove, prove it to yourself. Mix up some fiberglass, put it on the, on the board, leave it and don't sand it, put some body fill, mix it and put it on top of it, and try to get it off the fiberglass. Give it some time to cure right, like I did, I let it set overnight, pull it off, see if you can do it. And if you're not satisfied, then slap shot, you know what they say, there's not enough evidence. And I won't finish the rest. But anyways, you want a hat or shirt of your choice. Congratulations for winning. See you later.